Hey there, are you still struggling to find your first epic analyst job? In this video, I will tell you the three main ways people are, have been getting certified in the past. And I will also give you a valuable Excel document that will speed up your process in finding entry level jobs that you can apply to. My name is Gabriel. I created this YouTube channel to help people like you transition into epic EHR roles. I worked at a front desk and I was also a scheduler at a radiology department. I honestly had two reasons why I left that job. One was, okay, balloons. <laughs> One was because I was tired of us failing our patients in terms of running behind. We would always run behind and it honestly bothered me a lot because at the end of the day, it was the people that are in the front lines are the ones that suffer the most techs, schedulers or uh, receptionists, doctors and the patients, of course. Absolutely, the patients come number one. But number number two is the, the, the people attending these patients. I had voiced my concern about running behind so many times, needing more people or even expanding the resources to attend patients. So I worked in the radiology department that was next to a city U department, which is a clinical decision unit department. And if you've been working in healthcare, you know how integrated these systems are. Patient comes into the urgent care or CDU. And then a lot of times they need imaging, not just Monday through Friday working hours, but also on the weekends, also in the evenings and even overnight. So the radiology department's always open. What bothered me the most was having patients wait so long to get seen by our department. And I knew there had to be a better system to accommodate patients as well as think about budget uh, in terms of uh, you know, the hospital world, right? Because a hospital has to make money. Even though they are nonprofits, they still make money. This was my push, honestly. It was running behind often, uh, letting my manager know, like, you know, we're running behind. Uh, can we do something about it? And the answer is always like, there's nothing we can do about it. Sometimes the reasons why those patients would be behind was because the patient earlier on from that day had something that would delay their imaging procedure. And if we could have known that ahead of time, then we could have avoided delays. I knew that we can use data in healthcare. Um, you know, I was always tech savvy. I liked technology and I knew that this is this was something that could have been fixed. You know, we were all promised that EHRs would solve these kind of problems. Years later, wait, like lots of years later, I still kept seeing the same problems. So then my question was, why aren't EHRs fixing these kind of issues? Since that's what the promise was about EHRs. And I decided to learn more about EHRs to try to address this problem. The first step I took was to find entry level jobs or epic analyst jobs in the area and i couldn't find any honestly so that, that was my first issue as i couldn't find any no one was hiring entry-level analysts and i decided to become a trainer first like an epic credential trainer because i found out that they don't have to get certified they don't have to be sent out to verona and it made sense um, that they will be hired much easier since there's no cost to acquiring that person. So I worked as a trainer for a couple months, I think it was six months. And honestly, I, I was terrified. <laughs> I was terrified to be in a trainer because I'm not a great public speaker. I've never been a great public speaker. Uh, I get nervous, but I knew that this was something I had to do if I wanted to increase my likelihood of getting my first Epic Analyst job. So I did. I had the opportunity to join the an epic analyst team. I, I spoke about this in, a, in another video in more detail. Um, it's, maybe I'll post it somewhere here. But it was it was kind of devastating because I didn't get the opportunity to officially interview with the manager since I failed the Sphinx. Sphinx test, uh, if you guys don't know what a Sphinx test is, is an exam that is created by Epic Systems that is given to, to healthcare organizations to see if a person has the intellect to get certified. If the person is able to pass the Sphinx test, then they are more likely to pass the certifications because there's a project involved and there's an, a final exam involved in that. And I failed it and and it ruined my, my opportunity to become 
an epic analyst. This was my first time, you know. Imagine, you know, you you finally get your interview and you're like, oh my God, finally, it's my breakthrough. I'm going to be an epic analyst. And then they tell you, before the interview, I want you to take this exam. You know nothing about it because no one has information on what this thing, like what's the material for the Sphinx test. And you don't know how to study for it. <laughs> so I took it, failed it. I lost hope for a little bit. <laughs> my wife knows that I'm, I guess I'm not stupid. <laughs> she knew it, it wasn't, it wasn't me that was the issue, but it was how the test was set up. And that happens a lot in school and colleges, like in, right when you go to school, there are some classes that we fail and we just, we let that failure define us and then we don't continue moving forward. And you, you need to be surrounded with people that are going to keep pushing you uh, because it's inevitable. You, you are, everyone's bound to fail at something one day. And for me, it was that, right? I continue to look for epic entry level, epic analyst jobs outside of that organization that gave me the chance to even take the Sphinx test. And I finally landed an entry level epic analyst interview. And for some reason, they did not ask for me to take the Sphinx. I was so shocked and I was so happy at the same time. I feel like it, it was one step closer to my goals. Like I mentioned, I, I, I wanted to understand what's going on on the back end of EHRs to understand why healthcare was still failing patients. And EHR is the heart of a healthcare system, in my opinion, especially Epic, because Epic has a lot of integrations. And you can do billing, you can do clinical workflows, interface with imaging systems. There's a lot of stuff you can do with Epic. That's the number one EHR system in America, by the way. Number two is Cerner. So for those that don't have the Epic experience, Cerner is your other option. They also have EHR analyst roles. I was able to interview for the Epic analyst job, the entry level one, and I, I got it. Uh, initially, I didn't do any build. It was all um, break fixes. I decided to still <laughs> try to figure out how to build stuff, even though that wasn't my, my main job my main job wasn't to build stuff i was not allowed to build stuff i was told you're only going to do break fix stuff so that is simple edits to records in epic if something's broken update that record it should fix it things like that very simple i decided to keep digging into the user web documentation and figure out how to build stuff kind of like reverse engineering something's not working in the system but if you dig into the user web documentation, it leads you to like how that system was created. Having that knowledge, that was the reason why I was able to get my next job as a builder. In my opinion, this is something that everyone should focus on is learning more than what they are told to learn. If you're not that kind of person, I don't think an epic analyst job is for you, to be honest, because there's a lot of stuff that you won't know, that your teammates won't know, that your leaders, like your leads won't know, that even your manager won't know. And if you can't figure out yourself, then things are gonna be taking a long time to be completed, like projects and things like that. So you have to be okay with the unknown. You have to be okay with not knowing stuff and figuring how to solve things that haven't been solved before. If you're scared of that, I would tell you to just click off this video because that's what an epic analyst is all about. I just want to give you a backstory on my pathway to becoming an epic analyst, but there are other pathways to become epic analysts. Mine is not the only one. The other three main ways are working at a healthcare organization while pursuing a degree in health IT, health informatics, information systems, or even health information management. And at the same time, you need to be working at a hospital that uses Epic. So all of these paths, all of these three main paths require you to, to work at a healthcare organization that currently uses Epic. If you don't, your chances at getting Epic certified are, are super low. I mean, you might still be able to become an Epic analyst, but it's, it's so hard. Like, you know, now that there's more competition into getting Epic analyst jobs, uh, I think it's even lower. The first main way that I was talking to you about was getting a degree in one of those subjects and also uh, working 
at a healthcare organization that uses Epic. And your goal is to learn as many workflows as you can. Learn how the system works. When you click a button, what happens next? When you don't fill out a, uh, a form, when you don't fill out a uh, data field in the EHR in Epic, what is the error? Think about it as like, why can I move forward? Why would someone desi design, design something like this? Why would someone design a system where I can't move forward or there's a hard stop if I don't fill something out? Think about that. So all those times where you ran into something where it's like stopping you to move forward with your workflow, that's something that you have to think about. That's number one. That's the main. That's uh, one way to get Epic certified. Number two is to work for Epic Systems um, themselves. So Epic Systems is who creates this EHR. They are based out of Wisconsin, uh, in Verona, Wisconsin. And there are, if you're still in college, there are lots of recruiters that come to recruiting them for Epic TS roles. TS is a technical support role. And what they do is that they get assigned multiple hospitals. They help um, the people working at those hospitals with builds. So they are supposed to be the experts if you don't know something. Keep this in mind, not every hospital has that because it costs money. It costs money to have an Epic TS in your healthcare organization. And that is the reason why consultants exist. Healthcare organizations don't have money to hire someone from Epic Systems themselves. Then they will probably hire a consultant who is someone that had um, five plus years of experience working with Epic. So they, they know the systems pretty well. The problem with this path, though, is the reason why I didn't take this path was because you have to travel to Epic headquarters. So you have to live it to get certified. There is a clause, I believe, that you cannot um, transition out of there to like a different health system. I, I think it's two years now. It used to be a year, I believe. Uh, so this information all comes from Reddit. Uh, there's a Reddit form that has inf a lot of information about Epic. So that's where I'm getting this from. If you, if you do decide to work there, um, the, the great thing about that is that you'll work with the developers themselves and you'll have more information than, than Epic analysts do at healthcare organizations because you are supposed to be the subject matter expert in your application there. You're supposed to help other analysts, even other experienced analysts with building things. So of course, they will give you the best training there. When you work at a healthcare organization and, and you're an Epic analyst, all the training that you get are uh, the, like when they fly you out to Wisconsin, it's probably like a week or two of training that you get. You, you go back to your healthcare organization and then you just have other analysts train you. But at Verona, you have developers, you have uh, TSs, which have like so much more experience than Epic analysts and you learn from them. So <clears throat> you end up having more knowledge working there. Uh, and then the third route, what I did, which is become an Epic credential trainer first, you would need to have your bachelor's, right? You would need to work as a credential trainer. And you would also need to have um, experience working at a hospital. And I feel like this pathway is better for those that are not too clinical. I feel like it's much easier for you to transition into an Epic analyst role with pathway number one if you have clinical experience. But if you don't, then I think it would be easier for you to get an Epic Analyst job with um, being a trainer first. Like you actually get to learn clinical workflows and that's very valuable in the, the Epic Analyst world. And you also develop public speaking skills. So as an Epic Analyst, you do have to present builds to others. And if you struggle with public speaking, I think this is a great experience for you to lose that fear. I still have it a little bit, but I'm, I feel like working as a trainer has helped me tremendously. I used to be terrified of, you know, speaking right in front of uh, classrooms, like for, for projects and things like that. So those were the three main ways to get Epic certified. For those people still watching the video, I want to give you the most valuable thing that I've created to help people transition into these Epic roles, which is just an Excel sheet. <laughs> the simple Excel sheet that has all of the hospitals that are linked to epic so hospitals that use epic or health systems however you want to think about it i also added another column that has the state 
for these uh, health systems and then another column that has the links to the websites. What you will do with this document, with this Excel sheet is you will filter it by the state that you live in and then you will look through all of their um, career websites for all those hospitals and apply to the jobs there, depending on your domain knowledge, of course. So if you don't know what the one-to-one -one conversion is for, like what the Epic application is called and you know what your domain knowledge is, I have a playlist on my channel that you can watch. I will link that on here and put in the description as well. Watch that video and based on the application that you, you're supposed to apply for, just apply to as many as you can. Uh, you can also look outside of your state and apply for remote roles. So there, there are a couple entry level remote roles, but I, in my opinion, I think it's much easier if you apply for the in-person ones because no one is taking those, no one's applying for those. So this Excel sheet I created myself uh, and I, I did it. I, it took me a, a long time to, to come up with this Excel sheet, but I wanted to give this to you guys for free because you guys have been supporting me for so long and we just hit the 1000 subscriber mark. I'm seeing the, the feedback that people are getting value from these videos. And it, this is just something that I, I want to do for you guys because it's so much helpful to, to have that than to figure out yourself, honestly, because uh, the other way of doing this would be to go to the Epic user website, right? Type in healthcare organizations that, that are around where you live and and you have to pretty much type in one by one to check if it comes up in the search box. If it does, then it means that they have a connection with Epic. And it just takes a long time. And uh, I, I didn't want you guys to do that. I want to save you guys time. Time is very valuable. And yeah, so that's a small thanks for, for everyone that subscribed to this channel. I promise to continue to make more content. And there is a there's a course coming out for EHRs. I, I, I want to put everything that I learned so far in terms of like system design of EHRs and I want to put it in a compact form uh, that anyone can take it and be able to understand more about EHRs and uh, honestly I think this will help you with your job application since you'll have the, the basic knowledge of um, EHRs and also of the data that's needed in EHRs. Like I, I do recommend people to take the data analytics course on Coursera, uh, the Google course, but I feel like it's that course goes too in depth into data analysis and not much about EHR. Like EHR has its own vocabulary, their own data that they work with. And I, and I wanted to condense all that information to one, one course for everyone to, um, to be able to, to take. If you're still watching this, uh, please look at the description below. Uh, click on the link for uh, early access to the course. Uh, sign up is going to just ask you for your name and email. And you will also be signed up to newsletter. So I put tips on emails as well. I send out weekly or bi-weekly. It's free. It's a free newsletter for people interested in EHRs. So that's all I have for you guys today. I appreciate the time that you guys took to watch this video. And I hope this was helpful for everyone out there. Thank you guys and have a good one.